Welcome to They That Moped. <laughs> you see what I did there? Yeah. I got a moped. An oh, really? E- an e-moped. Really? I hadn't, I hadn't heard about that. It's very exciting. Actually, just as we were starting this, I was thinking we should have put it like in the background behind us where people could actually <laughs> it's, see it's it. It's actually literally parked on the other side of the door. Somebody uh, DM'd me and they said, have you seen uh, Bob? He's, he's, I don't know the word, the, not drive because you don't drive that thing. Of course you, what do you, you mean? Do not, I think she said like. Riding it? I would ride it. I don't know. You'd ride a bike. You'd ride an emo. I don't know what it was. It was just like this. Tooting? Tootling around or something (laughs) like that. And she said, he looks so cute. I'm adorable. All right. So Bob bought an iPad. An e-moped. An e-moped. Which is basically. It's like a moped that plays a lot of emo music, I think. Yeah. So it's this little moped thing that he got because we're going to have a little bit, some parking issues on campus. for. I've always wanted one. This was the final straw. Hearing about construction and parking, I only live like a mile ish from the university, and I always thought, man, it'd be cool if I just had like a little something to like zip up and back to the university or and to Bennigan's. And now I can go to Dunkin' Donuts. And now you have. I can this. go to Taco Bell with my son. Now you have this. Can you put awesome. two people on it? You're not supposed to. Everything in the manual says never do that. And I take Aiden all the time to Taco Bell. We're having a great time. Yeah. So Bob got this thing. It. It weighs about 12 pounds. I think actually you can put it in your wallet. It's unbelievable. It's just, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. And it's connected to his phone. Right. It's automatically. So when my phone, when I, if I don't have my phone, it doesn't turn on. Unless you got the little thing that you carry in your wallet. Right. It's ridiculous. You guys. It's so fun. Again, you guys, I, I, I'll, I'll I love, put a picture up. I love the fact that this watching is a the podcast video can see and we try to explain things and, and just with the, the words and language and that, but just this imagine is, the most awesome thing you can imagine. Imagine the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen in your life. And here's the thing: like he has he has a helmet that he wears. And oh, then it's so cool! Wait, I has, have it here. He I was going to try to wear it, but I can't put my headphones on. Okay, he has these little gloves and these goggles. He looks like you know how you see those dogs that are like in the sidecar with these goggle things that you. It just all right. Bob's putting it on. So That's if right. you're if you're watching, feel free to turn it off. Um, <laughs> it's just unbelievable. This again is when you look at the U2 an- analytics and like the spike yeah, going right. straight down. That happened, you know, two minutes into the uh, podcast. So Bob is excited about that, which is great. And it's fun. It is fun. And you can't wait to ride it. Actually, you know, that'll be fun. But my father had one of those because in growing up, he we lived maybe, I don't know, a mile and a half, two miles from the hospital. In Durango, Colorado. Durango, Colorado, the city of the Silver San Juan. Uh, and Wait, what is it the city of? City of the Silver San Juan, Durango, Colorado. Yeah, yeah, is San, that a fish? The San Juan Mountains. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I can't wait to ride it. Did you let the sister ride it? Any of the sisters yet? They haven't asked. They haven't asked. Did anyone who's rid it, uh, ridden it other than you? Martin Watchgen. Okay. That's okay. it. Now, when do you use the pedals? It has pedals on it. It does have pedals because that makes it the ped part okay, of the mode okay. ped. And when I, so the hill to Franciscan University is extremely steep. The back hill. The, yes, the back hill. The well, the west, front hill's the even. The west entrance. The, the front entrance is even steeper. It's just longer. Well, maybe six one up doesn't yeah, be better. Yeah. But um, so the back entrance, which is where I go up through. Not anymore. No, Starting I Starting tomorrow. Uh uh-uh. uh. I got my e moped. I'm going to cut across the parking lot of St. Joseph. Ah, See? So uh, right at the top of the hill, I've got to do about 10 rotations of a pedal. Okay. Just to help the battery keep moving and not fall over. And then... Yeah, this is great. Um, If anybody's still listening, Mm -hmm. uh, this is fantastic. (laughs) And just pray for Bob. Uh, I've said already that I'm not... Numerous times. I'm not going to visit him in the hospital. Why do you think this is like a death trap for me? Well, it's not a death trap, but you will have an accident. I actually kind of already did. The the tire, I, I didn't realize I had to inflate the tires when I got it, and it blew out a little bit. Okay. But I... I didn't fall. Okay, we could have an over or under, over or under three months before Bob has some kind of an accident. I say under. I say over. Okay, there we go. We'll find out. Have you heard it? What's today? Today is June 13th. Yes, the Feast of St. Anthony of Padua. Yep. So So 
There you go. There we'll, you go. We'll, we'll, we'll come attention, back folks. in I'll come, October 18th. Yeah, I'll, I'll be math. coming back. Next time I come out that I'm alone and there's no one else on the <laughs> other side, you'll know. <laughs> when, you'll, when, I, when I phone in uh, in traction at the hospital. Right. Yeah, you'll know. The uh, five has that'll, be, that'll be great. Fun sports, uh, exciting sports My things going on. My team against your team. That's right. So the Tampa Bay Lightning defeated the New York Rangers. Rangers put up a heck of a fight. Their goalie, ridiculous, but they could use more defense. Um, to not make the goalie have to do everything. Yep. But the Tampa Bay Lightning are going for a three-peat. And they got to get through the Colorado Avalanche. Who are an incredible hockey team. Yeah, and they, they said, I, apparently, I don't follow hockey a lot, but I was talking to Dave Fatula this morning, and he said, oh, my gosh, they're such a fun, exciting, yeah. young, quick team to they watch. Are. This, so. is, this is a great example of, like, the young upcomers versus... Yeah, you know, the yeah. grizzled veterans. This could be the three-peat. Is there that? It, yeah. It'd be a three-peat if the Lightning win. Yeah, but yeah. I can't Im- I, I haven't seen who's favored, but I can't imagine it's not the Avalanche. They're well, really, of course it is. really, really good. A Colorado team. They just swept uh, the Oilers yep. going into it. Colorado so they, team. They're rested. But here's the question. Is it better to be rested or is it better to keep playing? That's the age-old age question. That's the age-old question. That's the age-old question. Right. I, I can't answer that. Oh, what is it? I cannot answer. Oh, that. I thought you could. No, because you're age old. I am. I am. Here's the uh, the thing. So we we did our baseball tour, which turned out fantastic. Oh, cool! Right, you went. We you did went three to games, PPG Park. Three games in four days. So we okay. did uh, PNC Park. P- PNC PPG. Park. Right. PPG is where the uh, right. Penguins and then play. on Tuesday we went to Cincinnati, which was great. A wonderful turnout. I think we had forty some odd people. Just it was really really fun. Yeah. There was a gentleman that with us, uh, alumni Chris had never been to a baseball game in his life. Not just wow. a major league game, had never been to a baseball game in a life. How I, bored was he? I just couldn't imagine. He left out about the, about the fourth <laughs> inning. He said, it was nice to see everybody. I'm out here. <laughs> I was just here for the beer. But a funny thing is, is that re- that game got stopped in the eighth inning because of rain, and it was crazy. So we're, we're running. They said, oh, it's raining. We got to go. So we all just kind of left. And right. So I'm out of the stadium, and I realized I left my phone. <gasps> Yeah, in the little cup holder in front oh. of me. So we had to go back and Did some, they let you back in? Well, interestingly they said, No, you can't come back in. And and I just stopped and I said, Ma'am, I've got to have my phone. Yeah. She's like, uh Okay, well come right back. I said, Okay. So we just oh, like, that went, was nice we're of running her. in there. Good and somebody her. somebody went at the Were you wearing your clerics? Did no, you? I was just in baseball cap just, and that kind of thing, right? Just looked like a fan. Yep. Wait, what kind of baseball cap were you wearing? Um, actually, I chose not to wear a team cap, so I was wearing a Ryder Cup golf tournament cap. Oh, okay. Yeah. But somebody, one of the alumni had picked up, picked it up. And then the next day we went to Cleveland. That rained out in the fourth inning. Mm. So, Boy, baseball sounds so exciting. It's phenomenal. And here's yeah. the thing. All of the home teams won. Oh. So you're welcome. But wait, if it, you said it got rained out. Yeah, there's rain. It stopped for about two hours, and then they finished up the game. Did you wait two hours? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that was the thing is is that we were we I had to get back to campus that night, so we ended up yeah. getting back at around. It, it rained the whole way. It was actually, it was kind of stressful. It was raining and oh, it's the worst. Yeah, yeah, in for rain. two and a half hours. Yeah. But so it was it was actually the best thing is is being with got to meet alumni. lots of cool yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Were there any I alumni think. that did the trifecta? Did anybody join you for all three? Other than university people, right? Other than people who were paid to like you. No, uh, Tim. Tim went and. Uh, Bob went. I don't think anyone else went to all of them. Okay. A couple went to two of the three. Oh, well, that's yeah, pretty good. good. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Well, so it was great. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. An NBA, let's ca- catch people up there. I A good friend of mine was t- asking me to please, please root for the Warriors because of the They That Hope I thought you said root for the oh, Celtics. Oh, no, root for the Celtics because yeah. whatever team we root for loses. Well, I am yeah. actually rooting for the Celtics, though I like Steph Curry. But the season, uh, the series is tied 2-2, two to two, and it's heading back to... Um, San Francisco. Yep. All right. There you go. There's our sports <laughs> updates, folks. So we, we have should have some kind of song or something. Da, 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 sports. sports update. We've got a promo. So here we go. Ever wish you could take a class at Franciscan University and learn about faith and culture from our professors without paying tuition or taking tests? Isn't that every student here? <laughs> that's right. I was going to say, that's not a small... We mean here, every student much. anywhere. Yeah, that's right, yeah. right. Well, now you can. Yes, Franciscan offers free online courses. They're known as MOOCs. These non-credit courses feature video lectures from some of our top scholars that you can watch from home. 
Our very first course is on the theology of pilgrimage, and it's taught by none other than wow. Father Dave Pavanka. You can hear about Father's Dave pilgrimage, Father Dave's pilgrimage adventures and learn how pilgrimage plays an important role in your faith journey. Father's Dave's course may be the first, but it won't be the last. That sounds like a threat. There are more free courses to come covering everything from theology to literature to science. And you can learn more at franciscan.edu slash free courses. That's franciscan.edu slash free courses. Apart from you, Franciscan University. Perfect. It's kind of cool, actually. That that particular uh, MOOC, I'm talking about my Camino, the walk across Spain. Yeah. So it's, and it's, MOOC, by the way, for those listening, is a... Was it a massive, massive online, online class. open class? class. Yep. So and you can take those for, for free. Yeah, so it what I do is I think, I, I can't remember honestly how many classes they broke it up to, but I'm just talking about my Camino. But kind of a cool thing is my nephew is actually walking the Camino right now. Oh, very cool. So he should be done with it in about two days. So for about the last 27, eight days, we've got a you know text message each day. Just yeah, kind that's of, cool. So it's, been, it's actually really been fun. Walking it again, I pulled out my old journal. Uh, it when was, just, was that, like 10 years ago or something? It was all, Actually, it was 15 years ago. It was for wow. my 10th anniversary of ordination. Father Joe and I did it. And it was really, honestly, it was one of the best best experiences of yeah. my life. And I just go back to it time and time again. First off, just to being a part of pilgrimage. I, I'm, I'm really convinced that, that we as a church, first off, we have such a history of pilgrimage and the idea of pilgrimage and movement and grace and faith and conversion and penance and all that kind of thing. To be able to invite uh, a, a new a new understanding of that, so that it's not merely pilgrimage to go to Europe or go go to Guadalupe, although that's a part of it, but what does it look like for us on a day every day to have pilgrimage? Mm -hmm. What does it look like to, as a family, to make a pilgrimage to your cathedral or something like that? So just this idea of of movement, of being intentional, of going and journeying to be able to encounter the Lord. So the the, the stories are fun. I think yeah, I think it's it was a, a wonderful experience, uh, and. Encourage people to be part of it. Is this just audio or video as well? It's video. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. And there's little things that's nice. It's little study guides and some quotes and uh, some further reading and yeah. if you want to do it. So obviously I wrote the book uh, Hiking the Camino, so I think that's a part of yeah. people want to get more in-depth with it. But it was, a great, it was a great experience. That's really exciting. Yeah. Well, yeah, check it out, franciscan.edu slash free courses. Could I do the Camino on my emo pad? Mm, actually... If you're pedaling, you can. There are three ways that you can do the Camino. You can walk it, okay. you can ride a horse, Ooh. or you can do a bike. I think biking would be really, really difficult, but uh, you'd probably have to pedal a certain amount. Well, I could pedal without like putting much energy yeah, into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could pretend I'm pedaling it. How long will the, the battery hold? How it's supposed to be like 50 hours. I mean, I actually only do it like every three or four days. I mean, I've only had it for like a week, so I've only charged it up once. But it actually... Holds the charge really, really well. That's really cool. Yeah. So that'll be my book. Something Emo tells, Petting the Camino. Something tells me, uh, folks that are listening, just get ready because we're going to hear a lot about this emo ped over the next many months. Emo ped. El moped. What did I call it? No, I just I was just putting the emphasis on emo ped. You know, I like it. I like but we it. could call it in Spanish el moped. El moped, yeah. So we could call it tickle me el moped. We could. We could do all of that, or we could just move on to the next thing and leave the moped in the dust. So there was a youth conference this weekend. There was. It was great, actually. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're noticing on camera, you're probably wondering how oh, I got yeah. the wound in my head. You have this massive head. scar on your forehead. It's yeah. very manly. It's not as manly as my emo pen. Well, I like to use the word heroic in, mm. in how I push through with this. There's In the backstage, there's this little metal, I don't know exactly why, it's this holder stand or something like that. And I just hit my head on it and cut and blood gushing forth. And but I, again, her, yeah. <laughs> let's see if we can see get cause Bob to <laughs> to faint. Um, but I pushed through. I mean, again, heroic is the word that comes People to my mind. People use the word hero too casually. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes. Not, not all hero wears, heroes wear capes. Some of them wear habits. Some of them right. wear dresses. Right. So I I pushed through. You're right. You're right. And uh, a lot a lot of people were. Just really inspired by the way that by I... By the woundedness? Yeah, by, by the, by the head way wound, I this. Hairy head wound? Indeed. But it was great. We had a, we had a small... Did I ever tell you, speaking of head wounds, before we do that, we, I, had a, I had a musician who uh, came one time to a conference. This was years ago. He had this massive gash 
over his eye and his forehead down to his eye. And uh, I mean, it looked like somebody took like an ax to his forehead. Uh. And we asked him what happened. <laughs> so he, he said uh, he was sleeping at a friend's house. And apparently he sleepwalks. And I actually know this because then sometimes he would like crash at my house when we were doing conferences and he would just get up and start walking around. So weird. So he was on the top bunk and there was a fan. And he doesn't remember this, but he thinks he must have sat up oh, oh, and gotten oh, hit no. by the fan. But this is what's crazy about it. He doesn't remember any of it. He just remembers he woke up and it was his face was sticking to the pillow and he wasn't sure why. And so as he's trying to peel the pillow, that's so pillow weird. Away from Sorry, his folks. Face. It's just he said there was just the pillow was soaked in blood. Oh, that's awful. His face was in blood, and he just slept through the night. I'm not sure I'm buying that whole story. Bits and pieces of it, maybe mm, the little bits of flesh that came off yeah, his forehead but, um, from the fan. What was I going to say about that? Yeah, um, you were talking about being a hero. Yes, that's I was. another thing I'm sure we'll keep hearing about. But the conference was fantastic. It was a little yeah. bit smaller group. It was only about 700. Which I is the first weekend the first is usually is a, small. Lot of, a lot of uh, kids are still in high school. Yeah, yeah. Like so, some schools don't get out until this time of year anyway. But our theme this year is fearless. We had, uh, I was thinking we missed a chance. We should have done a podcast with Sister Miriam. So we oh, could have gotten yes. I did the, one with two her. of the two of the three of the trifecta though yeah, with the, um, uh, abiding together. Abiding together. So. Abiding together peeps. But I did was, I did a podcast with her last summer for priest deacons. Oh good. good, good. Yeah, actually if you ever check out the Speaking with Deacons podcast, which I will start again in the fall, I had a wonderful interview with Sister Miriam and yeah. it was delightful. She's fantastic. So yeah. we had a great team, Sister Miriam, um, Dan Dan Harms. Harms was the host. Virginia. Yep, yep. Oscar Rivera. Oscar Rivera and Katie McGrady. Katie McGrady, yeah. Yep. So from the Katie McGrady show on Sirius XM. It was it was a great actually it was just it was it was ah lovely. It was just to have the, yeah. the, the young people together. Somebody used the word sweet. It was just a really sweet group. Mm. They were engaged. I think honestly, maybe one of the highlights and, and we were talking about it is there's something about the 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 praise and the worship is beautiful and and then having a group of you know, hundreds of teenagers move from yeah. that and just be silent in adoration and just be still. It's just the two, the, the, the two ways that the young people, ex, you know, express their faith by exuberance and excitement and, and dancing. It was just, there's something about being a kid that was yeah. just, like when I walked in and, and kids were just laughing. It was just, it yeah. was fantastic. And then to see this this movement that takes place and their openness to the gospel. Again, the, the theme was fearless. Um, we, you know, we live in a world, particularly with young people, honestly, yeah. they're so inundated with everything. And, and the scripture was in the world, you will have trouble, but, but I've, uh, I've, I've conquered the world. So just this invitation that, that the Lord has provided us to be able to live fearlessly and, and just really kind of unpacking, what does that look like for young people? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we hear this is, "Quote unquote Pride Month." I'm not sure what exactly that all that that entails, but you know that that I, I suppose some people with courage and that kind of thing. But I think the real courage right now in today's world is a 16 year old, a 17 year old that say, you know, I don't agree with that lifestyle, mm -hmm. and, and that's not something that that they're going to support. Again, the lifestyle and and that the activism and all that. There was one of the baseball players that was called out because he chose actually several of the players chose not to wear you know, the gay pride symbol during a baseball game. And unfortunately, we live in a world that, you know, tolerance is you have to, not only you have to support the person, you have to support the cause or right. or whatever it is. So, And to know, not be willing to wear that seems like you're being hateful. Right, exactly. Which, exactly. And, and that's what he says. Yeah. He actually posts, he goes, he goes, I do not hate, you know, these people. In right. fact, in fact, my, he's a very devout Christian. He says, my, my God says that I have to love and, and that's what I desire to do. But I don't agree with this movement. Mm -hmm. So he, he got, as you can imagine, quite a heat, quite a bit of heat from it. But I think that's the case for young people. I mean, they're just being inundated with this, and it could be this or the transgender issue or the pro-life issue or you you name right. it. That's somewhat countercultural. So I think to be a 16-year-old kid and to stand up and say that they believe in traditional marriage, I mean— that's huge. That's that's tremendous. Yeah, the, the courage that it takes for these kids. So I think it was a relevant theme. We had a lot of fun. We we played more some of these games that were just a lot of fun. So it was a great weekend. Yeah, that's you awesome. stopped by. I say you you're just. I in did. Friday I popped night. in a little bit on Friday night, and I checked out the Saturday game too. So I'll be okay. hosting um, those conferences. There's one in Rochester, and I'll be hosting 
one of the ones in St. Louis. So I was just kind of sneaking in to see the flow of it and how things were going. Because it was nice. I It's rare, actually, that I am yeah. at home on a weekend on a weekend that yeah. there's a youth conference and I don't happen to be assigned to that particular conference. Yeah, so. well, I got a text message from Bob maybe Wednesday that said, you know, Friday, let's go to the new Jurassic Park movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we tried to find a time that it just, my schedule was just crazy and it couldn't work it out. But you do have a report of that film. And to say you loved it, would that be a stretch? Yes. Okay. I would say, to say you hated it. I would say that if you remember in the first Jurassic Park movie where there was that big steaming pile of uh, Triceratops poop, that was more interesting than Jurassic World Dominion. It was um, a train wreck would be too kind because yeah. a train wreck would be more interesting to watch than... What caused the train wreck? I mean, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah exactly, is, exactly. Yeah. It was more like a train delay that yeah, never yeah, actually yeah, showed yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just it's just one of those, one of those things. It was a movie that need not exist. Um, they... It showed nothing new. I'd say that probably the most frustrating thing about it was there was no cleverness to it. There was no, wow, I haven't seen that before. Oh, that was interesting. Yeah. It, yeah. it was really, they oh, recycled. I didn't see that coming. Right. Yeah. And actually, I think, like, when I think of, like, the first Jurassic Park movie, and I think Steven Spielberg's direction in the first Jurassic Park movie isn't recognized well enough. Here we go, because, folks. Hold yeah, on. And, and we're going to recognize it right now. Well, no, because the special effects in the first Jurassic Park movie were so overwhelming. I mean, it was the first time you saw a dinosaur yeah. move that wasn't claymation. Right, I mean, right, it was right. just, it was awe-inspiring. But the action sequences were so clever. I mean, being in the tree and being chased down the tree by the car that's falling through the branches. Mm -hmm. Or... The T Rex running, and you know, objects and mirror are closer than they appear, and you see this huge roar of it. I mean, there was just a cleverness to the action sequences, and I think that about Marvel movies as well. You know, like even the last Doctor Strange movie, which you haven't seen yet, they do some great action sequences that you go, "Ha, huh, that is really cool! Clever. I've not yeah, seen yeah, yeah. that before." And obviously, that's the challenge of any of these series, you know, to be thinking of what haven't the audience seen yet, you know. But they didn't even try. Right, even, right, I mean, right. they just recycled all the dinosaur chase stuff. Good thing I, Top it, Gun wasn't like that. I mean, exactly. Even that felt more fresh. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a way you can do an homage to the past but still make it fresh in sure. the future. This was like stale. It was funny when I talked to Saturday. I'm not, I'm not sure when we chatted about it. But Bob was visibly upset. <laughs> I, like he it was, was like, an un, it was unjust he was to make a movie offended. that bad. It was very, I very remember Father Denny and I went to one of the Mr. Bean, I think movies. Was this it, like, well, which one was it? I don't even know. It was actually when we lived in Europe and I walked out of that offended. Like was it, I was it Johnny English. Maybe I'm trying to think what Mr. Bean movies there were, but maybe, anyway, maybe continue. that was, he is brilliant by the way, but I'm with you on this. Keep oh, on. it was, it was just, no, just yeah. that. It was just an awful movie. And I yeah. walked out upset that I paid for it and that nobody warned me. Nobody stopped me. <laughs> yes. you know? So, so you say I died. I took the, you want to talk about heroes. Yeah, heroes. Yeah, you are. Heroes not all heroes wear bullet. capes. Some of them were awesome. That's emo right. pit helmets. That's right. I took the bullet for you. I appreciate and it. You're welcome. And for those listening, I hope I have saved you. Yes. $12 at least. Yeah. Right. So it was good. Um, the, the last thing is somebody reached, or I reached out to somebody else because they were talking about Blonde Day. So I think like what Thursday or Friday. Thursday, I, we have a national something day for everything, right. right? Yeah, exactly. So it was National Blonde Day. And I, I raised, I think, a reasonable question. Mm -hmm. When is National Bald Day? I'm and sure there is one. There is. I think oh. it's like six, September 16th or something. Okay, like we'll that. remember so that. We'll do we'll look, a, I'm we'll, going to put we'll that on we'll my calendar entire, right now. Yeah. Does that mean I have to shave my head again? Yep. Yuck. Everybody does. Mine's just starting to grow back. It is actually looking. It's looking pretty good. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. I got to go cut mine. Do you? Yep. It's time. Okay. To stay bald. Yep. Yep. Are we going to have a podcast next week? I hope so. Why wouldn't we? Well, because I'm going to be away and I'm going to kind of try to get away, get away. So we oh, you are like on vacation? Yep. Yeah. We got to figure I'm that out. I'm doing a work camp, so maybe we won't. Okay. We'll figure that. Pay attention, folks. There's we'll let, more where that came we'll from. We'll let you know if we can uh, pull it off or not. Cool. Awesome. Hey, um, Transition time. Dun, Transition. Dun, dun. Uh, we're continuing our petitions. Boy, wasn't last week great? With it Heather? really was. Actually, that we should have yeah mentioned fantastic. that earlier. The response was, it was just really, really wonderful. Yeah. 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 I appreciate it very much. And I'm so glad she was with that petition. I think, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those was, was a great reflection. Can I say, I, you may find this hard to believe, but I did not listen to the podcast. You don't? I don't. How much did, did the questions and, an no. and answers make it in? No. 
And, and I think we did that for a reason. We officially ended. But I must right. say, the question and answers that came about that were beautiful. It was really great. I decided to not put it in no, that's just fine. because that's fine. I, the audience, we said the podcast is over, but now we'll take questions. And so I didn't feel as if the audience actually... They didn't necessarily sign up to be, sign a, part up to be a part of the podcast. Right, right, right. But you're right. That was actually One of them a was really beautiful. Lovely, she shared uh, a story, of, I mean, very tragically, that her father killed her mother. Yeah. And and just what that journey was like for her to forgive. I mean, it was just, yeah. I mean, the the beauty and the vulnerability was just really, really beautiful. And just the honesty. I mean, she had tears and said it was, yeah. I mean, it sounds so stupid, but <laughs> right. like she was talking about, it was really hard for me to forgive. Well, I would think so, <laughs> right? right? I yeah, would exactly. think so, but yeah. I just thought it was such a beautiful, a beautiful day. I hope people were blessed by it. I was very much blessed by it. Yeah, amen. And we've got... Two more petitions left, but really three if we go for the doxology, which okay. we probably should. Okay. So okay. I guess we'll say we have three more episodes okay. on this left. Uh, but today we're talking about, and lead us not into temptation. Um, and the catechism begins by talking about how difficult it is to translate the Greek verb in this petition. Um, it says the Greek verb is used by a single English word. The Greek means both do not allow us to enter into temptation and do not let us yield to to temptation. Uh, you might remember a few years ago, and I was sharing with Father Dave before we recorded, I, I did a bit of a deep dive on this. Uh, you, I heard in the news that St. Francis is changing the, Our, or Pope Francis, rather, is changing the Our Father prayer. And because he didn't like, this is how the news was portraying it, didn't like the way it was phrased, lead us not into temptation, and wanted it to be changed something more along the lines of do not let us be led into temptation, which might actually be a bit more accurate. Now, this is just a little asterisk. Uh, if you ever want to learn anything about Catholicism, do not learn it from Fox, CNN, or USA Today. Right, right. So, C- CSNBC is fine. Yeah, of course. But Rachel Maddow yeah, really yeah, has yeah, her finger on the pulse got of it. Catholicism. Yeah, she's got it. So um, I— That was I, one—let me just, on a side note, this whole thing with Pelosi and Cordovione, I, I was amazed that these people had come out. It's like, well, you know, I went and read the catechism. And, <laughs> and they said, really? <laughs> so you're now our Catholic theologian. It's right, they know it. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to read it, folks. I read we an know article it. one time. That's right. Yeah. I'm reading a teleprompter right, right now, and what right. it says is— I'm Catholic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Anyway. So anyway, just a little history on it. This wasn't Pope Francis's idea. Uh, actually, 2002— was that J.P. Pope John Paul II. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The Italian Biblical Commission had asked to change the translation in the Italian version of the Bible. It was approved a few years later. I think that was while Benedict was Pope. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 2017, the French decided to change it for its scripture and also for the liturgy. And that's when Pope Francis spoke up and said, I think this is a fantastic idea. But okay. it wasn't really his idea. And just to be clear, when you say change it, it's not like to some totally Change the fabricated, translation. fabricated right. thing. But right. that, like you, you opened with is that there are two tension, you know, two translations that are in tension with each other. So right. it's not like that's, oh, let's just change it. Right. Yeah. yeah nothing yeah. was changed. It's actually trying to get back to the original yeah. Greek and articulate it more. Two years later, it was approved in Italy uh, for those liturgies. And again, Francis was cool with it. But, uh, you know, when I first Googled it and I started reading again, the Fox, the CNN, they were all saying, and so he's changing it for everybody. Pope Francis is changing Pope it. Pope Francis. Yeah. But um, no, actually, it's just changed in French and Italian. Then the, the article that I read that was a bit more of a deep dive from a Catholic source said, uh, the uh, head of the English translation said, we've not been asked to change it, and we don't have any intention <laughs> to change it. So that's just a little aside when you hear this uh, about it. But the heart of it was, I think, you know, his little catechesis on it was really quite accurate, which is to say, it's not that God leads us into temptation. That could be the wrong way of interpreting that language. You go to the letter of James, and it says that God doesn't tempt us. God tests us. And the difference being God will provide many opportunities for us to grow in virtue and holiness, but he's not providing opportunities for us to fall into to sinfulness. Sin, exactly. um, that's what the devil does, and that's the next petition. We won't try to jump ahead to that too much. No, we won't. But the idea behind it is that we're asking God to protect us from temptation, from sin. Um, and I like how it talks about discernment. The Holy Spirit helps us discern. This is uh, 2847 in the Catechism. Between trials, which are necessary for the growth of the inner man, and temptation, which leads to sin and to death. It says we also must discern between being tempted and consenting to temptation. 
And and that's that's a whole nother thing. I I actually Scott Hahn I think had my favorite phrase about it. He said, "There's a difference between entertaining a thought and letting a thought entertain you." Well, there's a famous line from um, Bishop. I've just come blank. Fifties. Hmm. Uh, Bishop Fulton Sheen. Yeah, Fulton Sheen. Yeah. Uh, where somebody asked him, are you, are you entertained by lustful thoughts? He said, no, they entertain me. You <laughs> right, know? So right. just that, again, that, that's a quote from he, whether or not it's true, it's, it's certainly attributed to him, but that's absolutely right. Is that I always, you know, when, when people come in and they, they repent for maybe lust or something like that, one of the things I always ask them is what's going on before that? Cause yeah. it's almost always is that we open a door to that. And that's really what it's saying is like, don't let me open the door right. to those temptations that, that might lead to ultimately more serious sin. You know, the act of contrition, you know, part of what we say is help me avoid all occasions of sin. And I think that, you know, goes back to our conversations in our earlier uh, segments on the virtues, that, that virtue of prudence, you know, that would be able to, you know, avoid beginnings, mm -hmm. you know, really that that is such a powerful way to stay in God's grace and to stay in the light of holiness is if we can avoid the beginnings of things, because if we let the snowball happen, then by the time, uh, you know, by the time the, the temptation is sure. really at its fullness, You've lost. we are at our weakness. Right, 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 you know, right, right, right. And, and, and with that. The other thing, Bob, that I thought was good was the the trials that are necessary. Yeah. You know, that like in, in athletics or in music, if you're training to become better at whatever, there are difficulties and struggles that have to be worked through so as to be able to become a more proficient musician or athlete. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think it's the same thing in the spiritual life is that some of these trials are necessary to help us, first off, a sense of confidence, right, that I really can overcome this, mm -hmm. that I really am strong enough, that God's grace really is big enough. Yeah. So that once we experience that, it's we become more, again, more confident in, in our, our walk with the Lord. So I think sometimes we say, try to do away with all trials. No, no. just give me the grace to be able to sustain them and work through them. And be able to discern the trial, which is an opportunity for holiness, and that's something that God might be putting in our life, and a temptation, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is really more born out of our own sinful desires. Mm -hmm. As St. Ignatius would talk about the world, the flesh, the devil, mm -hmm. you know, all those you know, kind of discernments. And it does talk about the battle of this. Um, I love this, 2848, lead us not into temptation implies a decision of the heart. For wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. It is an ascent to the Holy Spirit, the Father who gives us strength. Mm -hmm. And it's a battle. Uh, and such a battle and victory can only be accomplished through prayer. And that's why we pray this petition, you know, that we're really asking the Lord uh, for the grace to uh, avoid occasions of sin to avoid temptation, to embrace what he gives us, and, and to believe that he has overcome sin and death, which brings us to the next petition, which we're not going to get to. But no, really, th there's, a, there's a synergy between these two of leading us not into temptation and delivering us from evil. But that idea of the temptation is really the, the things that we will face in this life. Uh, we have a God who can help us overcome those by his, by his grace and his will and his strength, and most importantly, his love. And that's what the Father can give us. Amen. Amen. So lead us not into temptation. Yes. Can I say one word about translations? You may. The absolution prayer at confession is getting a new translation. I heard about that. Yeah. What do you think about that? It's only three words that are different. Okay. What are the words? The words are right now we say, uh, God the Father, mercy through death, and resurrection, and resurrection, and to himself, and has sent the Holy Spirit. It's now it's poured, yeah. poured out the Holy Spirit yeah. among us for the forgiveness of three ministers. May God give you pardon and peace. It's now may God grant you. Okay. Wait, what is it? No, wait, it is. God the Father, mercy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's now give instead of grant. Okay. Yep, that's it. Yeah. There you have it, folks. For those listening, he didn't fall into a hypnotic trance. He was actually just trying to recall the <laughs> yeah, words. Yeah, yeah, the prayers of absolution. <laughs> it's one of those things, yeah. Well, and the church will keep doing this uh, sure. as a way that at different times, trying to just be more authentic to the original texts, the original prayers. And yeah, I and mean, what are you really trying to say? That. Yeah, I agree. I yeah. agree. Amen. Agree. All right, should we pray? I would think that would be lovely. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the gift of faith and that you... Yeah, that you love us and you care for us. Just as you're sharing that this particular petition, it goes all it continually goes back to the Lord's love for us, his desire for us to be in relationship with him. So Jesus, we pray that that we would continue to be known by you and loved by you, that in the midst of trials and temptations, we would be faithful to you, that we would always be able to receive the grace. Your grace is always and everywhere. 
available to us. Mm -hmm. Allow us to be able to open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to be able to receive that grace. Jesus, we pray for the listener who is struggling most today, that you pour out your blessing upon them and let them know your love and your closeness. May Almighty God bless them, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Father Dave. And thank all of you uh, for who are listening. We're praying for you. We hope to see you this summer at one of our many adult conferences. And you can always shoot us an email, hope at franciscan.edu. That's hope at franciscan.edu. God bless. iPad. Moped. E-moped. It's like a regular moped that plays my chemical romance all the time.